Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for today's webinar, Designed for the Future, Energy Star for Commercial New Construction. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items I would like to go over. First, you can submit questions to the Q&A portion of today's presentation by sending them in the chat, which you can access by hovering your cursor over the speech bubble icon on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Second, a link to the recording and the presentation slides will be shared with all registrants after the presentation. We also have a few polling questions available in the polling panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and we really appreciate it if you could take a moment and provide us with some answers. Now I'm going to hand things over to our presenters for today. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon, and hello to everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Energy Star for Commercial New Construction. My name is Karen Butler. I manage the Energy Star Commercial New Construction or Commercial Building Design, as we affectionately call it. And joining me is Sam Laprenzo, or Samantha Laprenzo, with ICF, a contractor working in support of EPA. Next. So thank you for joining us and taking the time to spend with us to learn a little bit about Energy Star and how you can use Energy Star to incorporate our offerings into your commercial new construction programs. And we're going to talk a bit about those offerings, the Energy Star lifecycle, the portfolio manager tools overview, resources for commercial new construction and where you can find them, and the recognition that you, your organization, and your customers can receive from Energy Star. And finally, our big request in hoping that you will be engaged enough to get involved and join us with leveraging the Energy Star brand and resources and tools or to enhance the activities that you're currently doing in your commercial new construction activity. Next. Next. Oh, here we are. Okay. Great. So I keep forgetting, I can't see you guys, and it's a delay, and I'm staring at the screen, and hopefully one day we'll get to do this in person, or at least with something that we can be a bit more engaged with one another. So this slide, I'm going to call it kind of like it's our brag slide, like the things that Energy Star can do to offer up to its partners, but it's only as good as, this, as your engagement with the program. So I'm going to go through these and talk a bit about Energy Star for new commercial new construction. I know many of you are probably very familiar with our program for existing buildings, for probably products, and maybe new homes and new, uh, new homes and construction. But for commercial new construction, um, and I can't see you raise your hands, and maybe I don't know if we have a raise your hands thing here to see if people are familiar with this. But anyway, most of you know that Energy Star is trusted by over 90% of the American population for energy efficiency. And so what the caveat is here for you all is that you can take this brand, brand with us, and use it to uh, establish um, trust and credibility also in your offerings. So it's kind of like you have your um, audience and your affiliations, but this is kind of like an add-on to even increase the visibility of energy efficiency. So the second bullet is, and we'll talk about this a bit more, is using the Energy Star metrics to complement the energy efficiency um, technical assistance, technical assistance incentives that you currently may have in your commercial new construction programs. And I'll explain a bit about that a bit more. I'm going to skip over number three for a reason because I want to end with that one. The next one is um, having your customers and your organization recognize or participating in Energy Star. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. One is the architects and engineering firms that you're working with, where their projects that meet EPA criteria, and which is probably a lot of that leads then from the activities that you're doing with them in, the, in your incentive programs, they can earn what's called Design to Earn the Energy Star recognition. And Sam is going to give you a bit more detail about exactly what that is. But in shorthand, it's a recognition or designation to show that this design project meets the criteria, and there's a logo that's um, attached to it, 
And what it's meant to do is to alert stakeholders and, and future clients that you're building buildings that meet the criteria of efficiency and to go on and earn the Energy Star. The second one, and this is new, is participating in the Energy Star Decarbonize Your Design Challenge. And um, there's a word missing there, decarbonize your, it should be design challenge. And what this is, is a way to encourage new construction projects to meet criteria and advance the opportunities of electrification and decarbonization. The next one for you um, partners or participants on the call that have been involved with Energy Star, many of you have applied for Partner of the Year. And part of the Partner of the Year application are the activities that you engage with, with us in. So now you can add your activities that you're doing with commercial new construction and add that as another way to enhance your application. And then the last one on the chart, and I'm going to go back to number three, is best practices and lessons learned shared. We like to do these webinars like the one that we're doing today, but we find that the best webinars we do is when we invite our stakeholders, our partners, and our um, clients, and clients who are engaged in these activities to share what they've actually done. We did a webinar um, last year, and it was called The Building Owner's Perspective on Energy Performance, on Energy Performance Targets, and we got probably one of the highest ratings, um, a very high rating in the webinar, and people wrote in and said that the session was very good because people actually got to hear the building owner talk about it and his engagement with his design team and also measuring it after the fact and operating the building. So we look for opportunities to engage people to help us spread the word and the message about the activities of commercial to construction. So now I'm going to jump back to number three, engaging owners and architects early in the design process with target setting. Many of the activities that you guys do with your work is helping design teams understand technologies and strategies that are going to meet an energy reduction target of some sort or goal. We have metrics that actually set whole building energy efficiency targets, and we think that there's a great opportunity to combine the efforts that you're doing and the metrics that you're using with the metrics that we have to really get a very holistic picture of what this design is intended to do once built and operating. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Can you go back for me one slide, please? So this is just an intro to talk about the life cycle, but I wanted to read a little quote that's down there. And it says, as the architecture profession look to a carbon neutral future, it becomes increasingly important to connect building design expectations with actual performance. And the reason why this is important is because most times what we're looking at in design and how we're setting and using metrics in design versus what we're measuring in operation are different. Hopefully, the tools and resources that we have to offer, there's a way for us to bring a linkage and hopefully combine these two activities so that we can get more meaningful uh, and useful information. Next slide, please. Many of you may have seen this graph before. It's the performance-based energy curve for the building life cycle, and this comes from an AEEE summer study on energy-efficient buildings. And basically what the graph is showing you is the business as usual and the new school model, I'll call it. So the blue line is the new school, and then the old school is the, is the golden line or the yellow line. And what it's basically showing you is that energy needs to be considered very early on in the design process. Yes, that might mean more resources, more key people involved in it in order to get all of the information that's needed out to the key stakeholders. But when you front load the process, you come out with a goal that everyone can agree on get their heads around, and choose that to drive the process from all of the phases of design on into operations and continue on through operating the building with continuous improvements or maintaining uh, a high efficient building. So the first part of the graph where it says planning, 
That's the part where this goal setting and target setting goes on. That's when the owner, the building, and if the owner includes the owner, the decision makers, the operation and maintenance staff, the new construction staff, all of the key people involved, construction staff, the architecture and engineering firm, all engaged in setting these, this target so that everyone has clear understanding at the end of the day, once we build this building and operate it, here's where we want to be or better. So that's the first part of it. And so if you notice in the goal line, that's very low. And as it moves through the continuum, the goal line gets high at S, D, 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 and C, D, and that is schematic design, design development, and construction docs. And the old way is, or the current way that probably most people still do this, but it's beginning to shift, is that now you're going to investigate design. Now you're going to run the model. Now you're going to see what these technologies are giving me. Well, now it's kind of late because if you cited the building, shows like how you want it on the site, looked at some of the other uh, features of the building that may affect energy, now to go back and model the energy in um, SDDD, you might have to make changes to the design to become either cost prohibitive or it adds extra time to the project and time is money. So the idea was setting the goals early. Now you're picking your, tar you're picking your technologies and strategy based on your energy goal versus the flip side. So with all that um, said, this is kind of, you continue to model it. And as you see, the blue line continues to drop. There's a little bump up at the end. But the gold line, they kind of level out. But here's another caveat. Once the building is built and operated, if it's not operated as intended, then that yellow line can go back up again because now you're using additional resources in commissioning the building, putting the building back online, and, and making sure at least the occupants needs. And then another little story that I had is that one of the real estate companies that I worked with in Energy Star some years ago would tell me that their construction side didn't talk to their, their operational side. And their deal was they would get the building designed, make the decisions, deliver the building, and then the operational side is like, well, we don't like this. And then they go in and they rich, retrofit a brand new building, which makes a cost prohibitive, well, not, I won't say cost prohibitive because they can afford to do it, but it's a, not a very sustainable and efficient way to work. So by getting everyone at the table at the very beginning, this is where you can resolve these issues, whether I'll be at budgeting, capital budgets versus construction budgets, but this is when you get everyone at the table and make decisions so that you don't have to retrofit a brand new building. Okay, and let's see, were there any other um, key points I wanted to make. I think that takes care of it. Next slide. So what we did is we came up with what we call the Energy Star Life Cycle. And basically it's taking what that curve had in it and just documented in a kind of a flow diagram and going through all of the different steps and what you do with each step and how you can use our tools to make decisions during each step. So I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks so that you can actually see the process. And um, using this as a way to guide yourself through design, through operations, and to maintaining the building. Next slide, please. So the first one we're going to talk about goal setting, which I went into pretty detail in the previous one, so I won't reiterate that, but I think you understand the message of goal setting. But now you can, once you set your goal, now you can take a look at what strategies are going to help to meet your goal. And this typically happens in schematic where it's like, you know, the rough overview. And then you go into design development where things be get, become more refined. So in this particular instance, the chart that's on the right-hand side was developed by one of the architecture firms that's worked with us over the years. And if submitted projects and achieved design to earn the energy star and so on. So one of the ways he said he uses this is he was looking at different strategies for um, three, um, what is it, four HVAC systems. And if you can see the graph, it's pretty tiny, but I'll read it for you. The first one was a VAB with air, coil, chiller. Second one is VAB with water, cool chiller. Not coil, cool chiller, I'm sorry. 
Number three is geothermal heat pump. Number four is a four-pipe fan coil unit. And looking at the assessment they did, they went in Target Finder and did the what is scenario. To the right-hand side, you can see their Energy Star score. This was for a school, I believe. And so they had a 74, which didn't make the Energy Star target because 75 is the um, threshold. Then you have an 81, a 79, and a 76. And I think they ended up picking the one that was the um, 81, I do believe, because they ran some cost, some other cost numbers, equipment number, and chose that one as their particular system that they wanted to use. So this is what you can use these Energy Star score, even though you may do your model, you do your model, the set above code, and however some of these various programs are doing. Now you take those numbers and you put it in the Energy Star tool, and it tells you where that ranks amongst other buildings of similar type throughout the nation, and that's what the Energy Star score is derived from. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we've gone through um, our scenario, we've developed the design, and now we're ready to start documenting our choices for technology, strategies, and the other activities or the other design elements in the building that affect energy use. So in these construction documents, there are various forms of information that one would submit. So this document on the right is the one I'd like to call the bankable document. It's the last page of what we call the Statement of Energy Design Intent. And what this document has on it, it says that to the best estimate, we, you know, model the energy or calculate the energy use, you know, the fine print, which you can read if you go into the tool. But it has a place for the person who verified the energy model or energy use assessment to stamp and sign it. There's a place for the architect of record to sign, and there's a place for the building owner to, to, uh, to sign. So now this document can be included with your construction documents to show that this is the intent and all of the key people have signed off on it, that they are in accordance and agreement with this activity. Next slide, please. So now, the front part of where this document resides is what we call, again, the Statement of Energy Design Intent. And it is also the document that's used to qualify or to apply for Design to Earn the Energy Star. And so now this is the front page of it. And what this does, it has a summary in there of all of the inputs you put into the target by the Portfolio Manager tool about the project. So it will have, it will have the calculation of your and you estimate it and your energy use. It'll have the Energy Star score there in the top, the 93, nice and big so you can see it. And it also will have the use details like how many occupants are in the building, hours of operation, and so on. And of course, those change slightly because of the um, um, building type and what elements are going to affect energy use. So all of those things are documented, and then there's a place to document the owner's name, the architect of record. And so this form, along with the back part signature, gets emailed to EPA, and that's how you achieve or receive your accolades, accolades for Design to Earn the Energy Star. So it's pretty straightforward, but these documents carry very powerful information. And whether you're applying for Design to Earn or not, they're still very helpful documents that you can include in your construction document packet. Next slide, please. And now we move to carrying this project from design to operations. And there are a couple activities, of course, that should go on that makes it helpful for the building to meet its intended goal. And of course, commissioning is critical. When the building is started up, you go in, make sure that you, uh, the systems are aligned, measurement and verification routines are performed, and um, to make sure that the systems are fine-tuned to the occupant's needs. Because every building is energy efficient until you put some humans in it. And once you put those in, then you have to understand how these systems are going to need to be calibrated to have the most optimal performance and um, peak performance of the building so that the occupants can be comfortable and productive. And the other nice part about this, 
that will also align nicely with the activities that um, the energy efficiency sponsor programs like yourself are doing is that the metrics that were put in for design, your estimated annual design target energy numbers, are now housed in the same tool that you're going to actually get the information for the actual performance. So when the utility bills start kicking in, all of that information can be saved and contained in Portfolio Manager as a record. So you can go and now compare your actuals to your design. And if you want to go back and calibrate the model so that you put your design, your design numbers match your operational characteristics, you can go back and do that. And then the last um, graphic on the right-hand side is, of course, once the building has operated for at least, um, I'm going to just call it a year as a proxy because it may be 11 months now, you can now take that information, put it in Portfolio Manager, and if it meets the criteria, it can receive the building label for the existing building. So the whole idea of this process is to take it from design through uh, verification construction documents and then, of course, to operational through m and and then on into the future to constantly maintain and achieve a high performance level in the building, a high energy performance level in the building. Next slide. So the Energy Star tools, I'm not going to um, go into all of its features and, and advantages and benefits, but I'm just going to do a quick highlight. We have many webinars about how to use the tools. They were displayed at the beginning of the slideshow, and you can go on our training site and get more in-depth training. However, for those who are looking to do the new construction using the tools for commercial new construction, I think there are some pre-recorded webinars around, but we are happy to engage you and have more um, um, intense di or detailed dialogue or detailed discussions about how you can use these. Next slide, please. So the first one is talking or showing the metrics that each tool provides. And I should have used orange instead of green because the orange and blue are kind of difficult to see in the slide. But anyway, the green slide or the green line encompasses everything that Target Finder does, the inner box. So with Target Finder, you can get, um, you can put in your energy consumption, you can get an energy use target, you can also, um, once you get to target and put in your estimated annual energy use, you can compare that with the target. You can get an Energy Star score for about 16 space types, I believe, somewhere in there. I think it's 16. At almost 80, you can get an EUI for percent. I mean, you can do a comparison of the percent to the median for almost 80 other space types, so a bit more than 80 other. It will also show you the estimated greenhouse gas emissions associated with your fuel mix. And then for Portfolio Manager, you notice the line has gotten larger and it goes around the target line, it corrals the target line, because it does all of these as well as provide, um, you can put in your water consumption. There is no score yet for water or benchmark for water, but you can catalog your water consumption. And you can also to waste management methods using Portfolio Manager. Next slide, please. And so here are the features of the two. Highlight again, target planner with the green box around it. You can um, document your results. So that um, document that I showed you, the statement of energy design intent, you can print that entire document out from target finder. You just can't save it in target finder, but you can print it out. And then, if you have a project that you've worked on in Target Finder and decide that you want to save it, hold on one second. There's a robin singing outside of my window, so I thought I'd close the window so we can't hear him or her. So, the um, portfolio manager contains Oh, I was talking about the save feature. So you can save the document from Target Finder to Portfolio Manager. If you have a Portfolio Manager account, you just go at the bottom of the Target Finder form and says, do you want to save this to your Portfolio Manager? You put your credentials in, 
and then it goes and it catalogs it with um, a building that you already have, or you can set up a new um, record for it. And then again, Portfolio Manager with the break with the blue line, which is encompasses everything that Target Finder does. But with it, you can track your green power purchases. You can run custom reports, which are kind of nice when you want to do comparative analysis. Like I have run reports where I have a school district, and I believe they have something like 30 Design to Earn Energy Star projects, and many of those have gone on to earn the Energy Star certification. And so I can go in and run a report and look at their design scores, look at their operational scores, and see them lined up side by side. Or I can pick other things like EUI or, or those sort of things and then look at the metrics comparatively. And then you can share, transfer, and report data through Portfolio Manager. Many um, utilities are working with um, where their disclosure and benchmarking ordinances you can do a call to portfolio managers so that those that, that information can be reported out to the various entities. You can share information back and forth. The owner can share information with the design team and vice versa. Or you can transfer an entire record. Oftentimes, we ask that when the architect who submits the design to earn project to EPA, once they're done, we ask them to transfer it to the owner. Then the owner can maintain that record and share it back to the A and E firm, but then they can put the existing building data in, and then those two records reside, the design and the operational um, records reside side by side in the same account. And then last, you can track your changes over time by setting goals and see how you compare it to those goals. And um, let's see. Next slide, please. So this is my last slide for the presentation before I introduce Sam. But two things I wanted to iterate here is one, many of the industry programs have, everyone have their own way of doing things. They have their own criteria, their own metrics or whatever. And one of the things that I've always been a proponent of and would be helpful is where do these programs align? If I'm doing Energy Star, if I'm doing LEED, if I'm doing an incentive program, you know, with the utility, how do these things line up? And there's a lot of information out there in the industry coming at you, coming at us. And it's like the more we can make it easy for our customers to be able to kind of switch off and trade and, and use the information, it's going to be basically good for them at the end of the day because when it all ends up, it's about the customer and what they need in order to – get their buildings, um, you know, built or designed, built, constructed, and operating. That's the end goal. So all of the activities that we do that we can, our program, your programs, and other programs can help each other, help them meet that goal is one of the things that I hope that this presentation or you are wanting to work with us or we working with you and sharing so that we can make this easier for the people at the other end that they can actually get energy efficient buildings that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, save money, save off building energy power plants, and all of those things that we all talk about. So this is just kind of showing you some of the different entities and how the resources that we have can complement what they're doing. And this presentation was not designed to talk about those complements of our metrics in your program entities, but to really just kind of plant the seed to think about it so that we can follow up and have a more detailed conversation because that's a bit of more of a heavy lift. But now Sam is going to take over and she's going to tell you about some things that you can do right now, today. They're easy. They're great for engaging your client base, your customers, and it's good for the planet. It's good for our um, you know, joint collaborations. And hopefully that you will find what she has to offer to be helpful in your work. Sam, do you want to take it away? Thanks, Karen. What a great setup. All right, um, next slide, please. So Karen did a great job of sharing really the journey of Energy Star for commercial new construction and how the program overall aims to equip stakeholders in bridging the gap between design and operation. In the slides that I'll run through, I'll cover more about what's involved, the resources that are available, and the opportunities for recognition. Next slide, please. 
First up is our main go-to resource, the Energy Star Design Guidance. Our guide has everything that teams need to walk through the design process with Energy Star top of mind. Your customers and trade allies can use this design guidance to help prioritize energy strategies throughout the entire process. It can help them do things like specify performance goals, check and manage progress, apply for EPA recognition, and even create a case study to promote their accomplishments. The guide does a really nice job of boiling down the design process into the five steps that you saw in the Energy Star lifecycle Karen walked through earlier. And each of the steps provides actionable items that the design team can take to set themselves up for success. It provides tips and resources along the way as well. And a link to this can be found at the bottom of our presentation. We'll have a resource slide at the end where that is included, and you'll be able to visit that after. Next slide, please. This slide shows a screenshot of the Energy Star Commercial New Construction web pages. The, this landing page here is also included. The link to it is included in the resources slide. And the web page is broken down into six categories. Each one of them is designed to speak both to the architect or engineer, as well as the building owner, who in many times are customers of you as utilities and energy efficiency program sponsors. On these pages, the users can find tools and resources to help them navigate through the design process, ways to achieve recognition that we'll talk about later in the presentation um, for those projects that achieve an Energy Star Design score of 75 or higher. And then there's also some really great examples of projects that have led the way, um, both with Energy Star and just in terms of what they're doing with their design. And those are things that you can link to, you can look at um, to get more insight into what goes on within the program. Next slide, please. This section, I think, positions you as utilities and energy efficiency program sponsors to add immediate value for your customers. Recognition for commercial new construction is offered in two main paths that we will explore in this section. And there are opportunities for both you and your customers that we'll cover as well. Next slide, please. Design to Earn the Energy Star. The Design to Earn the Energy Star recognition is at the heart of Energy Star commercial new construction work. It shows the intent to operate the building to earn the Energy Star certification, which is really, again, getting that idea of bridging the gap between that design and operation phase. Design to Earn the Energy Star is awarded at completion of the contract document phase before the building starts generating any energy bills. And it's for commercial new construction projects and major renovation projects that meet EPA eligibility criteria, receiving a 1 to 100 Energy Star design score of 75 or higher. And that's similar to the requirement for actual certification, for those of you that are familiar with that. There, and similarly to that, there's no fee to apply for and receive recognition from EPA outside of you know, all, the, all the hours that you're putting in to work towards these things. The application is submitted to EPA by the architect of record, and that goes for approval and provides third-party verification that the design project achieved an Energy Star certification score that makes it eligible. Building owners and architect and engineer firms achieving design to earn the Energy Star have shared that they found it to be helpful for a number of reasons, and some of those include things like complementing utility and sustainability initiatives, compliance with state and local mandates where there are benchmarking ordinances in place. This can be really helpful to help position people right up front. Um, it indicates project, projects are designed to perform in the top 25% of U.S. buildings. And one, I think, that speaks to everyone, it helps own, the owner lower their operating costs. Next slide, please. On this slide, you'll see in that, that top left corner, the Design to Earn the Energy Star mark. So you're probably very familiar with Energy Star marks in general. The Design to Earn the Energy Star certification mark is the first recognition in the life cycle phase. It signifies energy efficient design was achieved to save money and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And the intent of the building is to perform in that top quartile of US buildings. Similar to the certification logo, the Design to Earn the Energy Star logo is used to recognize the achievement of the design. 
and you can display it. So it can be used on project design documents, at a construction site, websites, throughout social media, or any other advertising that you're doing, the same way that you would use an Energy Star certification mark, but more speaking to that design piece. And we have a whole slew of Energy Star brand guidelines that outline specific criteria around using that. So that's a nice immediate form of recognition um, that is something people can see when they look at a project. Um, and now we'll have a second poll question open. So if everyone can take a second to respond to that, that will be up shortly. And um, also, if you could go to the next slide, that would be great. All right, so this slide looks different than the others. It stands out because we wanted to draw attention to it. It is the newest component of the commercial construction work. EPA is really excited to announce the continuation of the Energy Star Decarb Decarbonize Your Design Challenge. It challenges architecture firms, their clients, and organizations to create and promote building designs that reduce greenhouse gas emissions through energy efficient design. By achieving design to earn the Energy Star, customers have already qualified themselves for participating in the challenge. So we'll go through how people participate, what's required, those types of things. But that, just by doing that and getting that initial recognition of design to earn the Energy Star, customers are already 90% of the way through being able to participate in the challenge. So it's a really great way for them to get this extra boost and share a little bit extra information about their project. EPA will honor participants for submitting commercial new construction and major renovation projects that achieve design to earn the Energy Star from January 2022 through December 2022. The nice part about that is we're in May, so that means your customers might already even be eligible. So it's a really great time to start thinking about this, positioning them for that success so they hit the deadlines, and it's something that you can share as a really nice value add for them. EPA selects best and honorable projects judged on how successfully energy efficiency is addressed, with special attention being given to integrating renewable energy, energy equity, electrification, and other decarbonization techniques into the overall design concept. And so this is your opportunity to shine. We want to call that out. Um, EPA will also, in addition to recognizing participants that actually submit applications, as a utility, as an energy efficiency program sponsor, EPA can recognize you. And we are able to feature your name, logo, and your web page for um, promoting the Decarbonize Your Design Challenge. So as you promote that to your members and affiliates through communication networks, could be websites, social media, newsletters, anything you can think of, get creative with it. Um, if you share a link to the promotion page, or are communicating about the challenge to your customer base, we can share information about the work you're doing as well. You guys are the ones doing this work. We want to be able to highlight that. So it's a really nice way of saying, you know, you want your customers to be aware of this so they have that value add for the recognition of their projects. And in return, we're able to recognize you on the Energy Star website as someone um, that is supporting this and link customers on that website directly to the program work that you're doing. In the next slides, we'll explain more about the challenge and how you can help your customers participate through further engagement with Energy Star. Next slide, please. All right, all the details, the, the what, who, how, goal. Um, so we covered a lot of the, the what and the who, but um, I mentioned earlier that by achieving design to earn the Energy Star, customers have really already qualified themselves for the challenge. So that, that piece, that big initial step has already been taken. And then to compete for a best or honorable project title, the next and final steps are to submit a design profile and project board. So with those, those really three things, they are counted as a participant and we can look at their project to um, potentially award them. Instructions for submitting those, those pieces, both the profile and the project board can be found on the website. But essentially what we're asking participants to do is share the story behind their design and what makes it a leader in the space. Why does this one stand out? And we give the prompt to really look at metrics such as the use of decarbonization strategies. I mentioned that we're focused on, you know, what initiatives were taken in electrification, energy equity, renewable energy. Those are really great things to call out, that kind of above and beyond piece that we really want to focus on as 
we're positioning for the future and we know that all of you and your customers are doing the same thing. Some other things that can and should be included would be your estimated energy and carbon dioxide emission reduction, the Energy Star design score that was achieved for the project, which can be um, received from the application for Design to Earn the Energy Star, so that will already be on hand, energy use intensity, or the total estimated annual energy use as well. And next slide, please. This is the second year of the challenge, but the first full year. We launched last year in the second half of 2021. And in the first challenge year, we had 50 projects qualify for the challenge. They totaled about 9 million square feet of building space. They were submitted by over 30 different architecture firms and owners and resulted in about 3 billion KBTU saved annually, which we saw a, an average reduction of 44% of CO2 emissions and saved people on average or a total $32 million annually. You can also see in this slide a couple of other pieces. The first one being that there are two of the four projects that did receive awards. So you can see screenshots of their project boards. So those are really great examples of what some of the customers submitted um, to be judged on. And we were able to award a best project for new construction and for major renovation, since both of those are covered under the program. And then there were also two additional projects that received honorable awards. And you'll notice at the top, right above um, the project features, we highlighted promoters of the challenge, and we would love for this to be you. We'd love to build out the promoter section and the supporter section of the website this year as we work to engage program sponsors such as yourselves, and we really see this as an opportunity to highlight you and your program. Next slide. And finally, for the challenge, we developed a toolkit to make promotion and participation simple. You can grab these images and social media messages. There's sample text right here you can use as is. You can customize as you see fit. Or you can share it with others to then share with their networks. These are all intended to be digital materials that can be placed on web pages, in newsletters, email blasts, social media. You name it, take it, run with it. And again, by utilizing one or more of these or taking your own spin, you would qualify as a supporter and we can post your logo and URL to the web page. And now we will have the third and final polling question up. And if you can go to um, the next slide and the slide after that as you're setting up the poll. Um, we're coming up on the end, so we wanted to leave you with some clear takeaways. So this next slide is where you'll get that. Excellent. So I know there's a lot of text, but it is all very, very great information, and we wanted to give it to you in a way that's digestible, you know, the how to get involved with each of these and the benefit of doing that. So there's six key ways. There's definitely more than this. We'd be happy to talk through it. But the first and foremost, you know, there, there's kind of these a range of, of really simple things that we, we see as being, you know, take this, this can be immediately implemented, and then understanding that some of these would certainly take more time to get up and running. But the first, coming off of just talking about the challenge, promote it to your customers. There's a challenge toolkit. It's readily available. The benefit there, it's a value add for your customers. It's something that EPA has created. It's something that they can be recognized nationally for on EPA's website and with an award. So that's just a nice thing to be able to offer them by simply linking to it or putting a web button on your web page. Educating customers about Energy Star. Energy Star is involved in all different things. And, you know, Karen mentioned up front, I think a lot of people, when they hear Energy Star, they think products, but open their eyes to this whole space. There's, there's a lot going on with commercial new construction. So linking to the resources. You saw a screenshot of the web page. Again, those links are included at the end of this presentation that you'll have in hand after, so all the slides will be sent out to you. But those are things that you can link to simply to provide them more information or to help them navigate the design process if people come to you with specific questions. And if this adds, you know, it, credibility from the Energy Star brand is built in to all of this. So that, that's a really great thing to be able to leverage, and it's no-cost educational information that's publicly available. You can also encourage customers to apply for Design to Earn the Energy Star. So it's that recognition that's the backbone of what we're doing with commercial new construction. And that's another thing that you can promote. 
It can be something that you talk to trade allies about, something you talk to customers about, and really encourage them to get that recognition up front. It, it helps when they're setting those targets and working towards that goal right up front. They're not only able to participate in your new construction program, but that will hopefully then carry through. So when that building becomes an existing building and it's occupied, it puts them in a really good place to be able to then participate in your existing building program and kind of follow everything through the, the full operation. And then integrating Energy Star requirements. This one we would be happy to talk to you about what makes sense for your programs, how best to do it. We understand that there are a lot of energy efficiency program sponsors out there that are offering technical assistance incentives or incentives associated with new construction design. So integrating Energy Star design metrics up front is a great way to ensure that they are set up to succeed in your program. It gives them access to those free tools, both Target Finder and Portfolio Manager, they can be using for this, um, and helps them hopefully be able to participate with you and get those financial incentives, but also giving them that little extra boost of, of the Energy Star Assist as well. And then sharing your story. We want to hear from you. We would, you know, whether it's today, whether it's in a month, we would love to hear what you are doing successfully, how this could work with you, what you think are great components that you could take and run with and build on. So reach out to us. Our contact information is at the end of the presentation. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We would love to really partner with you on moving things forward. And then offering training, training to your trade allies. Similar to what we're doing right now, you know, sharing what Energy Star for commercial new construction is, we'd be happy to talk about opportunities to share that with your trade allies. If they're, you know, they're not familiar with the tools, not familiar with the program, we can get them resources. There are plenty of trainings that go on on a regular basis for how to use the Energy Star tools. And there's lots of great documents that they can take and use on their own time as well if they aren't able to participate in a live session. So. Lots of great things to really leverage there. Um, and I want, just wanted to have these. I know it's a lot of text again, but I think it does really give some items to just think about when you walk away from the presentation today. And next slide. And next slide after that. This is that resources slide that I mentioned. So a couple of, or a few really key pieces within this, there's plenty of other links to other things that you can peruse around, so feel free to do that. And, you know, if at any point you have a question about something, definitely reach out. Um, the next slide is our last slide, and that is where our contact information is. So we can um, close out here at the end of our slide, so thank you guys very much for your time. We'll take a look. If no one has submitted any questions yet through the um, Q&A, please go ahead and do that and we'll answer all the questions that we have, whether it is now, whether it's in a follow-up email, definitely send anything our way. All right. We'll give it. Thank you, Sam, for that. That was very good. Um, and I will wrap up, and it, I believe that Yeah, so, um, sorry, Karen, I think you might have gotten cut off, but I did just see a question come through. Yes, yeah, we, okay. we will reach out okay. um, to, the, to the user that did submit a question about, you know, touching base offline to go over the Energy Star requirements. We will absolutely follow up with you. And I wanted to um, close with a, hold on a few parting remarks. Let's see. And that is, in closing, um, we would really be excited if you help us spread the word about the challenge and reducing greenhouse gas emissions and uh, making the built environment a better place. We have such a great opportunity to do this in commercial new construction, whereas you look at a lot of the different that are going on to retrofit existing buildings with the new technology is going to be very cost, uh, cost uh, high. And I think in commercial new construction, you have an opportunity to do this in a much more efficient and integrative way because you can start the design 
from the beginning with these enhancements in place and make decisions that are going to be critical to making them really work well at the end of the process. And then the other part that I wanted to mention is that with the disclosure ordinances and the BPSs, the building performance standards that are being touted and coming out in many entities, the metrics that we use for the design are the same metrics that are used for the operational side. So it's a great way to make this linkage. And like many of your program incentives that you already have structured in place, and as I know, these are very detailed activities that you go through in order to get these standards and these activities set up. So this could be possibly an add-on or an in addition to, to again, link that performance from design to operations, because what we're trying to get people to do is to look at the intended performance of the building as well as the efficiency of the equipment, because the building is only as efficient as how well it's operated. And so you can have the best equipment, and, but not necessarily have a smooth operational transition, and then it's off and not. So hopefully these tools will be things that you can use to help you advance your activities, and we can all kind of work together for a common goal. So those are my closing remarks, and I see there are no more questions, so hopefully you all we're able to um, ascertain something helpful from this, and we will look forward to uh, talking to you in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. We'll close out now. <laughs>